name is Precious and you're welcome to my kitchen. In this episode of Precious Kitchen, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make an insanely delicious West African snack called Chin Chin. It is so good. It tastes like cake, but it is crunchy. You can call it an African cookie. So I'll show you the ingredients we need and then we can start cooking. You make flour and butter. So these are four cups of all-purpose flour, which is equal to half a kilogram if you're more comfortable with kilogram and then six tablespoons of butter which are at room temperature and are melting away that's really good for me because it makes mixing so easy I have two eggs here a little bit more flour for dusting when I roll out the chin chin and then I have nutmeg and I have baking powder I have um, evaporated milk one cup of evaporated milk I love adding it to chin chin because of the rich flavor I have some salt um, half a cup of sugar and I have about a teaspoon here of grated um, orange rind or what should I say G grated orange back or orange rind you know it adds a lot of flavor to the chin chin so I have a bit of water here as I'll use it as needed in my dough right here I have my pasta maker for cutting the chin chin but this is not compulsory if you do not have a pasta maker you can make good changing by rolling it out and cutting I'm going to show you guys how that works so guys let's start cooking so the first thing I'm doing is cracking my eggs into a bowl then I'll add in that evaporated milk goodness I love evaporated milk in baking snacks I mean the richness of flavor it brings to snacks is just so amazing then my sugar goes right in then all of that orange should I call it orange zest or orange rind huh. I'm going to mix up everything until oh my goodness well incorporated yes I was too hard you don't really need to beat it so much just until everything is well combined keep that at the side then my flour and butter right here to this i'll add a teaspoon making sure that my, that teaspoon is level you know i'll just sprinkle this all over baking powder then a pinch of salt because like i always say salt balances you know the taste some sweet things it just really helps I feel like sweet things are kind of empty without a pinch of salt I don't know how to put it like the taste for it now this is about half a teaspoon of nutmeg then I'm going to use my fingertips to mix everything oh my god I need to take off this ring I'm going to clean it later but we don't need it here mix everything until like my food and nutrition teacher will say in secondary school the mixture looks like fine breadcrumbs now this is the part where I'll use my messy hands to add in the wet ingredients then I'm going to mix this to form a dough so at this stage while combining my wet and dry ingredients I'll see if I need maybe a little bit more water to combine everything together but I always want to mix them all well then i see if it needs just maybe a little trickle of water sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't depending on how well your ingredients are measured so i have my dough here you know it's all come together so i'm going to flour this board put it i'll just knead it lightly again trying to run away so now I'm going to just cut a little portion of this and show you how you know I normally cut my chin chin without the pasta maker because that's important for you to know I understand that not everyone has access to a pasta maker so you just want to use your hand and do this you know 
create maybe an oval or something. And use a rolling pin and sometimes I'll dust my rolling pin lightly if needed. Just to make sure it doesn't stick even though the glue is not sticky at all. Then, just roll it. Oh, I love the way the dough looks with those little pieces of the orange drying inside. It looks amazing. You just roll it, you know, to be not too light. Just not too light, not so thick. Now there are two ways I normally do it. So the first one is to like cut rectangles like this. Okay, three, and I'll keep this part to show you the other way. <laughs> so what I do is I just take this and I use a knife and I just do this. There. And if you don't want to go with a knife, if you have a pizza cutter, you could just, it's a little faster. You know, you could do that. You know, with like with this and with this, you know, do this. Now, these ones are like little squares we are making here. So, like this, and then, and you could even use like maybe a small cookie cutter to cut out this dough. Just whatever rocks your boat. And then you place this maybe on a tray, you know. And then you fry so these are like two styles you know of doing chin chin and i have a post on my blog <laughs> with these two styles now i'm going to show you my new level which is the pasta <laughs> maker so with this i'm just going to cut out a portion of the dough then I'm still going to use my hand and just you know, flatten it like so and now now the pasta maker has two sections this place is for rolling the dough which I really like because I, then I don't have to use a rolling pin and then this place is for cutting the dough so you roll here and you cut here and I set it to like the to be very open because I don't want the dough to be too thin so it should be thick enough, not too thin. So you just place it there and then roll. Look at that. It's always a good idea to pass it twice so it's really smooth. I mean, this is so good. I could use this for maybe any other thing that needs rolling of dough, maybe fish roll or something. So, what I love to do is to dust it a little bit because. When it goes through the cutter, it tends to stick together. So I like to just like put a little bit of flour on the top. Not too much because I don't want the flour absorbing the oil when we eventually fry. Then I'll cut it like this. Then I'll put it where it should cut. Once again, I'll just turn and turn and turn and like magic you know it gives me this beautiful strips so my chin chin is actually all curled I've heated some oil here canola oil on high I heated it for about 10 minutes so I've taken it down to medium heat so I'm just going to have my basket prepared here with paper towel as always my famous basket that basket is famous for holding all kinds of fried goodies so I'm just putting in my cut chin chin and it turns to join you know when I put them together this is just why I put them together I put them together because this they're going to eventually separate in the oil you don't want to overcrowd the pan so I'm just going to put in a little bit more you know, I have a really white pan here now this is not something that you do and you go away you have to stand by and as it begins to fry you have to regulate that oil check and then when it starts separating you go in with your spoon and then you just you see see what i told you guys separated so 
I'm just going to stand by and keep turning and turning until it is nice and golden brown. Then I'll remove and place on the paper towel. So, my chin chin is all done. It's beautiful golden brown. So I'm just taking it out of the oil, putting it on my paper towel to drain and absorb that excess oil. So I'm just going to repeat the same process, fry, fry, fry the rest of my cut chin chin. All done. This is the bulk of the chin chin with the pasta cut and this is the one I cut with knife and the pizza wheel, you know. So, you know, without the pasta maker, you still, you can still make really good chin chin. I'm just going to try it because you guys, you know, I mean, I want you to hear how crunchy, can you hear that? They are still kind of warm, so when they cool completely, I'm going to put them in an airtight container so that they don't get bad. Mm. It is sweet, it tastes like cake, but it is crunchy, it's like having cake and cookie in one. So, so delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.